Your kids will not read your trust except one page. In this episode, I'm going to address what is an ethical will or family values and vision document. This is important because your children probably won't read your trust except one page that says how much they get. So I'm Doug Andrew and I've been helping many, many thousands of people now for north of 48 years, optimize their financial assets and minimize taxes. But many, many thousands of people have come to me, even though I'm not an attorney, I do teach attorneys how to set up equal opportunity trusts and uh, how to uh, establish what I call family banks. And uh, many times, a lot of these attorneys need continuing education. And so I do advanced continuing education for uh, tax attorneys and CPAs. And But I'm not an attorney and I don't want to profess to be, but uh, do you want me to be honest or gentle? Most attorneys and CPAs within two years of graduating just sort of buy into, follow the herd mentality as it relates to estate planning. And so uh, I'm gonna be honest in this video and show you what happens when most attorneys set up trusts and uh, why you wanna not do it the traditional way, but uh, sort of do it a different way, even though it's gonna require a little bit more effort on the part of your attorney to do this. So throughout this episode, I'm going to talk about how to abolish entitlement mindsets, not set yourself up for failure with your kids and grandkids under a normal equal distribution trust and uh, why your kids can then read and reread or watch and rewatch, listen and re-listen to an ethical will because they will not read your trust. That's legal ease, except one page that says how much they get. And I'm going to give you an example or some examples of value and vision documents. So most trusts are set up with equal distribution rules of governance, meaning when an attorney meets with you, generally, once they find out your net worth, uh, the first question they ask is, uh, how many kids have you got? What are they going to start doing? Dividing up your assets in the trust. In fact, a lot of trusts are just boilerplate documents. And once they find out you have four children, they just go, Uh, what's your four kids' names? And they plug those names into the trust. They put your assets in the trust. And then uh, when you die, both of you, it's like chunk, 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 chunk is divided up into four parts and dumped in their laps. Unfortunately, it ruins about half of the heirs or kids in this country and they get an entitlement mentality. Oh, when do I get my share? As if they deserve it, they're entitled to it. So a lot of people come to me to abolish that entitlement mindset because they feel like their kids are hovering around like vultures waiting for them to die so they can get their share, their their piece of the pie. So that's why I wrote a book called Entitlement Abolition and I'm gonna gift you a copy of this book at the end of this episode uh, and you'll be blown away when you read and study this. That's called an equal distribution trust and I often teach and there's nothing more unequal than the equal distribution to unequals and people think, What? What are you talking about? And I explain it usually this way. Our creator does not give equal distribution of blessings, let's say of health to all of us, regardless of how some of us, including myself, may choose to abuse our bodies at times, okay? Our creator doesn't give equal uh, health to uh, the person who abuses their body, takes harmful substances, and sits around and doesn't exercise, uh, and the other person does. I'm going to give you the same health as them. Now, our creator gives us equal opportunities, not equal distribution. When people begin to understand this, I recommend they change their trust, or if they haven't set one up, that they redesign it to be based upon rules of governance based on equal opportunities. You give the equal opportunities to all your kids and grandkids, and they have to have skin in the game. They don't just, you know, get a bunch of money dumped in their lap they have the ability to be responsible and accountable. And if they get good grades, they get a scholarship. Maybe the family bank matches because this is all under what I call a family bank. So you can match it or they can borrow money at a low interest rate and they pay it back. If they can't pay it back with money, they pay it back by mowing lawns, painting, shampooing carpets or whatever. But they will learn that it's not just a handout. You're there to give them a hand up, not a handout. You will empower them. 
You want to give them equal opportunities while they're alive. And then when you die, they're not shocked. What? I got disinherited? No, they never expected it because you never led them to believe that they would just deserve a piece of what you built. Okay. Now, whenever I've talked about this to most people, they go, I want an equal opportunity trust, not equal distribution. Well, unfortunately, most people have equal distribution trust, so they have to change it. And it's easy to amend. Sometimes it's just having some documents, an ethical will. So let me give you a few examples of this as we go through. Uh, as I mentioned, your kids won't read the trust except the one page that says how much they get. Well, they will read your values and vision statement or your ethical will. So in the book I want to gift you at the end of this episode, you'll see how to capture uh, what's in here and what's in here. And that's more important than leaving behind a bunch of C-A-S-H, money, by capturing the knowledge, attitude, skills, and habits. And that spells an acronym. Knowledge is K, attitudes is A, skills is S, and uh, the habits is H. That's K-A-S-H. That cash is more important than leaving behind the C-A-S-H. Now you're leaving behind how to fish instead of dumping a bunch of fish in their lap, okay? And so uh, when you do it the right way, you can capture and leave behind something they will read and reread, watch and rewatch, listen and re-listen for generations because they won't read your trust. Before I explain what this is, if this is resonating with you, please subscribe. It's free. Just click subscribe and be sure to click that little bell so you'll be notified every time I post a new episode, which I do almost on a daily basis. I don't want you to miss out. On this channel, this is about you and your brighter future. And uh, if you like something, click like or post a comment or share with somebody who you think would benefit from watching this episode. Stay with me to the end because I want to gift you a copy of my book, Entitlement Abolition. You don't have to pay 20 bucks for it on Amazon. I will gift it to you free. Many times I've helped people capture what's in here and in here by having memory jogging questions. I have another episode on this channel that talks about you sit down with your mother, your father, your grandpa, grandma, or you do it yourself and you can push record on your smartphone and uh, you can do the video and you read the question and you give the answer to the question off the cuff. Uh, when were you born and da, 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 and what was your first job and when did you learn the, learn the value of hard work and uh, why did you fall in love with your spouse and what are the most important life lessons you learned by working hard and on and on and on. I have a lot of very powerful questions that end up going deeper, deeper, deeper as the person gets used to it. And uh, in 90 minutes, I have helped people capture a life sketch that uh, their posterity will watch and rewatch for generations they're not going to read your trust. Are you getting it? One of the most powerful documents that my book teaches you to do is what some people call an ethical will. That's way different than a normal will. This is what you believe in, what you stand for, what your beliefs are, your heritage, uh, your beliefs, your values, your vision. And so that's called an ethical will. Sometimes I call it a uh, values and vision document. And so when I gift you a copy of this book, you'll be able to sort of see some examples of this. I'll just give you a little taste right now of uh, what we have done in our own family. You don't have to have all of these, but see the Andrew family values and vision statement has three different dimensions because there are three dimensions of authentic wealth, the foundational, intellectual, and financial. And so I have uh, 12 bullet points under each. And this is attached to our trust. Our kids have this right now and they know what we stand for as far as our heritage, our values, our beliefs, our faith and relationships. They know the wisdom and the knowledge, attitude, skills, and habits. They know that we're not just going to dump a bunch of money in their lap and what we want them to do to never run out of money by using the right financial strategies. And so that's called a values and vision document. I have 12 bullet points and you can read these when you uh, go in and explore my book and download uh, our values and vision statement. We have mottos like together we're better or together everyone achieves more. You don't have to have all these. But we have, uh, you know, our, our sort of uh, slogan. We believe in being honest, truth, chaste, and benevolent. In motion and contributing value in the world. 
We meet challenges with faith, deadlines with hope, and exercise charity toward all. If there is anything virtuous, lovely, or of good report or praiseworthy, we seek after these things. Okay. How about our family creed? We strive for clarity, which blesses us with perpetual energy, balance in the three dimensions of authentic wealth, which takes the wobble out of our lives and increases the velocity in which we achieve our family values and vision. Focus on what matters most, which increases the accuracy in achieving our goals and confidence, which attracts opportunities instead of repelling opportunities. Uh, and we recognize and seize those opportunities. We choose to be responsible and accountable for our actions. Now, you don't have to have a creed. Uh, we have all of them, but you'll be able to read examples. Here's our family manifesto. There are 12 things in our family manifesto that colleges and universities do not effectively teach our kids and grandkids. This is what we teach our children and grandchildren on family vacations with a purpose. And this is our family manifesto critical thinking, how to be responsible and accountable, how to set goals, how to be active listeners and, and effective communicators, uh, how to consciously train your mind and body to unconsciously act in harmony with your family values and vision so that you'll be able to say no to drugs or alcohol in the moment because you go, why would I do that? That would bugger up my whole vision of a brighter future. You wouldn't believe how many kids don't have that vision in their head. Our family laws of lifetime growth. I took these from Dan Sullivan. We strive to make our future bigger than our past. We make our learning greater than the experience. We make our contributions bigger than our rewards. We make our performance greater than the applause. We make sure our gratitude is greater than our success. We strive to make our enjoyment greater than our effort. We make our cooperation greater than our status. We make our confidence greater than our comfort. We make our purpose greater than the money. We always make our questions bigger than the answers. Now that's just a taste. So these are the types of things we want to leave behind to our posterity. And they will read and reread and recite and watch those and capture the memories and the experiences, good and bad, for generations. That's an ethical will or a values and vision statement. When you leave behind your beliefs and what you have in here and in here, uh, they will cherish that. They will not read your trust. Does that make sense? So if you want to learn how to do this, I would love for you to get a copy, complimentary of my book, Entitlement Abolition. Here's how you can claim your free copy. You simply go to entitlementabolitionbook.com, click on the link below, contribute a nominal amount towards the shipping and handling. I'll cover the rest of that cost. And uh, you have to have skin in the game. Uh, then you'll appreciate and you'll study it but I will pay for the book. And then uh, there's options there to listen and learn or watch and learn. There's even an 18 hour masterclass. If this wakes you up and you want to implement, uh, you can invest in the 18 hour masterclass, which is a big deep dive into implementing all of these ideas. There's 12 chapters in this book, but this is about you, your loved ones and their brighter future.